Mad Max is really just a big thing, out of control. But with Pet Trainer 911, good manners are just a whistle away. Plus, want to take great pictures of your pets? We've got the country's best pet photographer. And the touching story of Emily, a brave young survivor and a four-legged guardian angel. All this next on Animal Attractions. Hi, I'm Megan Blake. Welcome to Animal Attractions, the show about the deep affection people have for their pets. And I'm Alex Boylan, and this here is Casey. We all know too often that pets don't always end up being the sweet companions that we want, like with Mad Max. It's another case for our pet trainer, 911. <laughs> Max is a nine-month-old German Shepherd puppy whose owners thought would make a wonderful addition to the family. But once home, his energy and excitement left him worn out. He escapes to the street and levels everything in his path. Not only is he messy, his owners are afraid he's going to get killed or hurt someone else. Now he's known as Mad Max because his endless energy is creating stress and anxiety. Max is always escaping through the gate, from the car, just running. It's like he, he smells freedom, so he grabs all of it that he can. Max! Max! Max. What you had it? The most concern that I have about is, is when he runs out in the street. And he's, he, he's still a puppy. He doesn't look both ways. He's not concerned about the cars or that type of thing. And if a car is coming, he'll stop. He won't move. You can call him. You, if you can grab him, you really have to pull him out of the way. He doesn't understand how big he is, and we have a lot of kids over, and when he jumps, he's playing, no, but he doesn't realize no. that he's, he may be hurting them. Some of the things he's doing that just makes life miserable is getting into the trash. If we leave him on the patio, rest assured when we come back, the trash is strewn everywhere turning over, you know, seedlings I like to plant. He'll get up on the table and pull the cups down, spill the dirt out. Just rambunctious. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the rhino in the uh, china shop, uh, so to speak. One time at the vet, she was trying to get control of Max to examine him. She had to call somebody because she couldn't. And I said, he needs emergency 911 training. And she got Ronald's card and said, you need to call him. She told me he was 10 month old and he was a handful for her and her husband. How you doing? Hi, uh, Tish Cromer, nice to meet you. Come on, let's introduce you to Mac. Okay. Mac was in the back room, he heard us <laughs> up front and he was whining and barking and she said, that's him. Put him in the back room, he would bark and just be a nuisance. So, Ronald, this is Max. And Max is a pretty good dog, but he is hard to control. He doesn't hold his commands. If the gate is open, he runs out, he runs down the street, and I'm really afraid he's gonna get hit by a car. Yeah, do you have that list I had to make out? I sure do. Here you go. Okay. Okay, yeah. We'll run back and forth in the car. Bolts through the door. Yes. Here, Can we... you help us? Oh, yes. I got him for 30 days. Great. And then I'll call you and let you know when he's ready. Okay. And then I bring him back home and I train you and your husband for seven days. Okay. And each time I leave, the dog leaves with me. So Great. now we're trying to see can we train the family. Okay. Well, when I left her house and I put her, uh, put him in my car, he immediately started wanting to run back and forth. But I took and I pinned his leash in the door and we drove him back home. And then when I got him home, uh, I put him in a crate, and he didn't want to go in there. He was bagging away. I even took him by his neck to push him in, and he was just bagging out. He didn't want to go in there. So he was trying to win with me, too. I had him in a crate in their house, so he had to come to my house and be put in a crate. Then I would wean him away from that crate where he'd be able to be tied up somewhere in the house where he can be a part of the family and be with us and get used to everything. 
after getting him tied down, I worked on him immediately and him being quiet because when I went into another room, he was even calling me. He wanted to be with me. So right away, I didn't say his name. I started using that word quiet. <laughs> quiet. So we established some dominance and I wasn't talking to him, letting him know, you know, or wasn't babying him. I just said quiet and then all of a sudden he started shutting down. And then the next day we took in the started taking him through some obedience, you know, because he was pulling and uh, going the way he wants to go. You go right, he was going left. He wasn't following you. So I let him pull me for a while, and then I started uh, changing everything around. You got a dog that constantly wants to pull and jump up on you, I use the pinch collar. The pinch collar doesn't hurt the dog. It just reminds the dog of who's the boss, how the mother dog did her puppies. I would just let him stretch the leash out like he's pulling me and give him a light, slight pull and tell him stop. Then all of a sudden he just started following me. Heel. Place. When Place. you take the dog through his obedience, stop. me and the dog, we bond. He knows I'm a dominant dog. He knows he, now he has to be follow Place. a leader. If he's out in front of you, he's the leader. When you let him off the leash, he'll leave you. So me working with him like that brings him closer to me and he respects me. I train him for the whistle, or when he goes out the door and takes off running, she blows that whistle and he turns around. He blow that whistle, he turns right around immediately. They would like to walk him off the leash, and that way he, he, he's up front, and then when you want him to come back to you, you blow the whistle, he comes back to you. And for him to have some freedom. So when he hears the command off, he knows to get off whatever he's up on. So what we did, we have somebody come to the door to set the dog up, to stop him from jumping on company. So what we did, we have somebody come in the door, ring the doorbell, come in. So that's what he did. He went up on that person and I corrected him, told him off. But I didn't reward him. Because if I reward him when he comes down, well then he gonna think it's a game. It's very important to give that dog some structure and to make him sit and to stay there when he's told. And the down and the come here, it all comes together. Now the dog, uh, to me, has a brain. So I made a call to the owners and asked them are they ready to be trained because the dog is done. Guess who's home? Hey, Max. Good to see you. Hey. He made it. Hey. He good at Look at him. He's sick. The hardest part was training me to let me do what I needed to do with Max and not let Max do what he, he wanted to do. Now blow the whistle and pull. Give him a treat. There you go. That's what I want to see you do, that right there. You blow that whistle, he's going to come running back to you because he knows you've got a treat for him. Stretch that lead out. Stretch that lead. Back up. Blow your whistle. And he's going to come run over to you. Now come back this way. Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. When the coach showed me how to put Max in the car the proper way, it, something so simple, uh, it, make, it makes a world of difference. There you go. And that's how you shut him up to let him ride with you. Now they know how to separate things. They know when to play with the dog. They know when to love and pet on the dog. And the dog knows the difference too. I have to say, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the results that I've received from Coach, that Max has received from Coach. And, and I, couldn't have, I couldn't have done it myself. Being able to have him take Max train him, come back and train us with Max makes a world of difference. I feel comfortable that He's learning, and that opens a lot of more opportunities for us to go places and have more fun so he can enjoy himself. We can enjoy each other, and I don't have to worry about him getting hit by a car. So he's safe, he's happy, I'm happy because he's happy, and, and it's, everybody's happy. Karen Will Rogers and Laura Lacey are famous for creating a portrait book of celebrities and their pets. Karen's gift is creating memorable photographs of people and their pets. And Laura is a talented writer. They're the team to call for great photos of you and your pet. And today, they're going to share with us their do's and don'ts for taking award-winning, star-quality photos of our own pets. I think when you really take the time to set up a portrait, it's just one of those moments that you're making, you know, within this relationship with your animal that will last forever. 
It's a moment in time that you stopped to say, I love this animal. I love this little thing in my life or this big thing, whatever the animal is. It's something that you have to do as a pet owner. Not only is it worth the time, it's worth the energy and all the love that you put into it in the moment and it means that much more 10 years later. Every pet deserves star treatment. To me, they're all stars and they're all stars in our lives, your lives and to capture them and preserve them is one of the greatest things you could do and, and it's a treasure. Animals are like little people and they have their own idea of tones that affect them and make them respond and that is a big key in taking a great picture. All right, bring in that next dog. Come on, buddy. Hey, come here, babe. Come here. Good, Good boy. boy. Okay. Good boy. Now, you want me to do something kind of playful with him, Karen? Why don't you stand behind the chair okay. and lean in, and we're going to get a shot. You kind of lean over the chair, kind of like... Come here. Whoop. Yeah, you, you lean in like this. Okay. All right, you guys. That looks great. Now, I'm going to move over here so he won't... Oh, that's beautiful. There. Real quick, you sit on the arm. You sit on the edge in there, and you lean in with him. Okay. Yeah, this sort of lean over. Hug on him. Hug that boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Very dark. Look towards this light tail a little bit more. Okay. Oh, that's great. Puppy dog. If you're photographing a big dog, what you could do is lower yourself to the dog. Sometimes if you go in and give him a hug, that's really a nice thing too. And it brings your face closer together. And um, that works really well. And sometimes it's good if it's a really tall dog, get him to stand on his hind legs and you can put the paws on your chest. And then he, both of you are looking at the camera and then you make a squeaky noise or whoever's taking the picture and you get great ear action, big twinkle in the eyes. We have so much fun with the props. It's so much fun to dress up dogs. Very good boy. And keep that on for about one minute, maybe less. Oh, there we go. He's a very good boy. Oh, that's great. Beautiful. Here we call him. Oh, Nelson, Nelson, stay, 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 stay. Oh, that's a good okay. pose. That's good, stay. right there. Where's your good boy? Oh, good boy. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's great. Okay, hold on. I buy these whistles that make animal noises from a sporting oh, goods yeah. store. Nelson, look! Who's a good boy? Nelson. Oh, that's beautiful. Nelson. Great. Nelson. <laughs> Nelson. They're great because the animals love the sound of a squirrel or a moose or a deer um, and that gets their ears going up and their eyes and they love it. Some of the dogs, it's funny, the older dogs are a little more hip to it. They're like, they look at me like, that is fake and I know it. And then sometimes you've got to use cue words like, you want to go in the car? You want a treat? Who's your daddy? That's cute. He's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big bar. Now he wants my whistle. Ask for a location when you're shooting your pet. What's really great is to put them somewhere where they're comfortable and safe. Um, for example, if you don't want them sitting on the couch, you know, don't get them on the couch and try to photograph them there. I like to put my dog sometimes in the front seat of the car, and I have them. It, gets them positioned in there and they can't move. And I get some great smiles that way with their heads sticking out of the car door. It's so much fun to dress up dogs, our dogs, you know, our friends' dogs for the holidays. And whether it's, you know, turkey feathers or Christmas with wonderful Santa hats. And we even have a wedding gown and a groom's, you know, suit. And it's so much fun to, to put these animals in these costumes because they take on a whole nother personality and they can really work it. It's really fun. It's really fun to see them sort of transform and then get handy and pose for the camera. It's great. Take portraits of these animals. Take pictures because they are family members. They are a part of your family. And to have these photos, it's just like taking pictures of your children. And if you don't have children, they are your children. So do it. It's fun. And it's just so great. You can slap them all over your refrigerator or frame them, whatever you'd like to do. But that makes your house just a little bit more of a home. Dogs come in all shapes and sizes, but here's a little breed that even though he may be small in stature, the term Braveheart fits him to a T. For 
a breed that's been so closely associated with Mexican tacos, it might surprise you to learn that the Chihuahua may have originated in Egypt, or China, or Spain, or Cuba. No one knows for sure, but what's undisputed is that this is the smallest of all dog breeds. Well, small in size, anyway. When it comes to energy and personality, the Chihuahua is a dynamo. I don't think that Chihuahuas are aware of their size. She goes outside and bigger dogs come up and she goes right up to them. So they say uh, like a mouse but it has the heart of a lion. Gigi gets along uh, very well with other animals. I don't care if it's cats or dogs or even birds because we happen to have a, uh, a parrot, a son Kynier. He'll fly off his cage onto the floor and uh, she goes up to him and they play. Chihuahuas are very good companion dogs family dogs as well. They like to be loved, they like affection, they like to play with your feet or play with your socks, uh, but they're not destructive like a lot of dogs. They don't uh, chew on personal belongings or furniture or, or anything along those lines. If you are interested in getting a, a Chihuahua puppy, I think you'd want to check and make sure that the ears are clean, make sure there's not any wax or any debris down in the ears, make sure the eye is nice and shiny and if there's no matter in the eye. I would check and make sure that the coat is nice and shiny, make sure that there's no parasites or fleas on the puppy. Uh, I think if all these things are in order, then chances are you're going to get a healthy puppy. Although chihuahuas are relatively easy to housebreak, their small bladders mean they'll have to eliminate more frequently than other dogs. And don't worry about the shivering. Chihuahuas aren't always cold or nervous. They have a very high metabolism, and this is simply a way they visually express it. For many people, especially apartment dwellers, a chihuahua is the perfect companion animal. Loyal, devoted, protective, and portable. It's always best if you can plan ahead when you're going to add another playful kitten to your household, but sometimes they find you when it's least expected. A common misconception is finding a litter of kittens and assuming that they've been abandoned. The mama cat has to go out and hunt for herself and needs to leave the kittens to do this, so it's best to monitor the kittens from afar. Monitor them for about 24 to 48 hours before determining whether or not they've truly been abandoned. You may have heard that if you touch a newborn kitten, that its mother won't take care of it. Well, in fact, this is true. So it's best to determine whether they've truly been abandoned because it's a lot of work to take care of newborn kittens. Kittens taken from their mom too early need to be bottle fed every few hours, even through the night. They also need to be kept warm and stimulated to pee and poop until about 23 days of age. They also need to be weighed on a daily basis to make sure they are healthy and gaining weight. Kittens are typically weaned from their mothers at about 10 weeks of age, but will begin to eat solid food at about 4 to 6 weeks old, usually starting with a soft canned food. Even though cats naturally groom themselves, some cats, especially long-haired cats, need some assistance. If long-haired cats are not routinely groomed, they may become matted. If this happens, make sure to see a professional as you can easily cut your cat's skin with scissors. You can also check for fleas and other skin problems by doing this. Additionally, whether you found your kitten on your front step, adopted it from the Humane Society, or purchased your kitten from a breeder, bring them to the veterinarian right away. If your kitten is astray, your veterinarian will likely want to test them for the contagious diseases feline leukemia and feline AIDS, which are potentially fatal. And remember, spay and neuter your kitten. And do this early, around six months of age, to prevent unwanted kittens. And if you still want more, there's plenty to choose from at your local shelter or humane society. Fortunately, most of us have never seen the inside of a rescue helicopter or met the life-saving medical team who bridged the gap between living and dying. But for Emily Warren, flying in one has been a regular occurrence. In fact, she's been on five life flights in the last four months. Um, our daughter Emily is absolutely a miracle. She has a form of long QT syndrome that is extremely rare. 
Long QT syndrome is a very life-threatening heart defect where her heart has very life-threatening arrhythmias. The doctor said we don't think that she's going to survive the second day of life and here she is 12 years later. This past year she's been incredibly unstable, spent almost six months in the hospital. So one of the highlights of that stay would be dog therapy visits and she met a very special dog and, um, and a very special dog owner and that was Joy and Clancy, the beautiful collie. I feel that animals just have so much compassion and pure love to give us and they really bring it out in, in children and especially when these children are away from their homes and they're in the hospital and they're not feeling well and when Clancy and I go to the hospital I can actually feel the energy change in the room when we when we come in. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to see Clancy this morning? It was so exciting as they would knock on the door, Emily would just sit straight up in her bed. Mom, it's Joy, it's Clancy. And she would ask me to put a blanket on the floor so she could just ease out of her bed with her wires and IVs and monitor and just get right down on the floor with Clancy. There was something about Emily that Clancy just found very special. He would get so still and so docile when he was around Emily. You could just see the stress leave her body. She would just love on Clancy. And I think as we got to know Joy even better, she would save that visit for the last one. And she would just let Emily spend as much time as she wanted. She really loved Clancy and asked, could I have a collie? Do you think I could ever have a dog like Clancy? And we weren't sure that that would happen, but we said, you know, we'll pick We'll pick a dog that needs a home. We'll go to a rescue or a shelter and we'll we'll do that when you're well and you you know we're out of the hospital. Joy was actually visiting Emily one evening in the hospital and she kept telling her doctor that I'm gonna get a dog and I'm gonna name her Lady. And Joy overheard Emily say that and she looked at me kind of strange and she told us about a dog that had been rescued, searching for food, a family had picked him up and had known that Joy had a collie herself. So they called Joy and told her about this collie that they had found. I said, well, does the dog have a name? And she said, well, they're calling the dog Lady. Joy felt compelled to tell us about this dog, gave us the phone number and we called, and it just sounded like a perfect match. So we just felt like it was meant to be. I don't think it was a coincidence that I got that phone call that morning, that Monday morning, that I was scheduled to go to Wolfson that evening with Clancy. When Emily and Lady met for the very first time, immediately it was as if they had an understanding. Lady came to Emily, not to myself, not to my husband, and the bond was sealed right then and there. And um, it was almost as if she knew Emily was a special child and that she could relate to that. Emily embraced Lady with such a love and just excitement because I think Lady also needed Emily. Emily wakes in the morning, pops out of bed, runs to feed Lady. Just, and Lady's there waiting. So they have a very close bond and Emily seems to enjoy caring for Lady, giving her that love and grooming her and feeding her and thinking of her. And I almost think it's because Emily's received a lot of care herself. And so now she gets to give that to Lady. Emily loves to take her for walks and she's gaining her strength. And so um, she loves to walk her to the ice cream shop. Is it for you today? No, this is for my dog, Lady. Oh, wow. I'm sure she'll enjoy that. It's a really hot day. There you go. Enjoy. Share an ice cream and just be together. If Emily's playing in a room, that's where I'll find Lady. So they just love to spend their day together. Emily can't wait for, em for Lady and Clancy to meet. We have special visitors coming. Yeah. Miss Joy and Clancy. Yeah. She is so excited. She thinks that immediately they're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend, that they're going to love each other just like Emily loves Lady and Joy loves Clancy.
see who's here. Hey, Joy, how are you? Come on in. Emily. There we go. Look, oh, ladies. Look how fun. They're fun. Let oh, me give Emily a hug first. Look, they can't like get the dog hug first. Come Clancy. Come baby. Come in, baby. Yeah. You know, I've heard about Lady, and, and I, I knew it had happened, but until we walked in the door and I saw the beautiful Collie and saw how attached Emily is and how much Emily loves the dog, it just made me feel so wonderful. Look at Lady's <laughs> tail. We haven't seen it going like that. Do I believe in angels on Earth? Absolutely. Um, and I believe that it's almost as if Emily is Lady's angel now for rescuing her, but Lady is Emily's angel because she just gives her all this hope and purpose and just every day she just looks forward to life. That was a really inspirational story. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Animal Attractions. And don't forget to check out the website, www.animalattractionstv.com. There's a lot more information on the features you've seen here today, plus it's fun. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.